My friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another lead code problem together. Today we're doing lead code 854K similar strings. So basically we're given two strings, S1 and S2. They are K similar if we can swap the positions of two letters in S1 exactly K times uh, so that S1 is uh, equal to S2. Examples are, so first one, S1 is A, B, S2 is B, A. Since if we just swap A and B, it'll give us S2. So K is one. Example two, we're giving A, B, C at B, C, A. And we can swap uh, A, B, C to B, A, C first, and then swap to B, C, A. So we swap B and A first, and then A and C, and that'll give give us BCA. So this will require two swaps and we return K is two. And some constraints, length is less than 20, S1 length is uh, equivalent to S2, and they only contain lowercase letters from A, B, C, D, E, F. And S2 is an anagram of S1. So basically these constraints just uh, first limit the how many com uh, combinations there could be uh, so that it doesn't blow up our memory. And the second is just to make sure that there is always going to be a solution uh, by saying, okay, S2 is anagram of S1. So this just basically says, says they are composed of the same letters at the end of, end of day. Uh, so they can always be rearranged so that one is equivalent to the other. All right, so let's take a look. So for this one, since it is asking us to return the smallest K for which S1 and S2 are K similar. So when you see word smallest, that's likely that this is going to be a BFS uh, type of algorithm uh, solution since BFS allows us to look at one um, level at a time. So the first time that we find the string uh, that they're equivalent, that's going to give us the smallest number of swaps uh, to get to that string. So this basically is a signal that we will be uh, using a BFS search for this problem. And the idea is really, um, really just to do recursion and then look at all the possible combinations with every single swap and locate the um, shallowest layer of the tree that give us that resulting string. So there's um, no other tricky part. So the way that we are going to do this is that at every single uh, level, it's going to, this tree is going to branch into its neighbors. Basically the neighbors are the strings that the current string can form with one swap. And for each neighbor, we're gonna check if that neighbor is going to be the same as S2, uh, if it's the same, then we just return number of swaps that we got to that specific neighbor, that specific layer. And notice that we only want to swap if S i and S two i are different. So basically, if you think about it, like I wouldn't want to swap this b, the first b right here, i is zero because that's already the same as my S two um, zero. Right. The first thing that I would maybe want to uh, swap would be the second character here because this index of one gives me different results um, in S21. So basically in code, this will be like, so that's one thing. We always want to swap two letters that are different. If they're already the same, we don't want to swap them. That's going to get us further away from S. So we only want to swap if the two letters are different because we want to swap so that we are closer to the S2 instead of getting further away. And if you try to visualize it, a BFS will look something like this. We're given A, B, C, and with one swap, we are going to swap A and B, swap A and C, and swap B and C. And that's gonna give us these three, and that this is one swap. And if we do another swap on top of this current layer, that's going to give us something like this, but we're going to keep a visited uh, set to prune the nodes that we have already seen before. So this will be pruned and uh, we'll just keep going down like this until we find it. 
we uh, this is equivalent to the S2, and then we early exit. So the time complexity for this BFS algorithm would be um, all of n to the 2k, because first for each of the swap, let's say for one stop, for one swap, we are going to basically using uh, two for loops. Uh, the first one is for i, the second one is for j. Um, so that'll give us square uh, and all of n square. So quadratic complexity for just one swap. And if we end up uh, taking k swaps, that's going down k layers of n square. So that's going to give us n to the 2k um, time complexity. And for space complexity, because we technically, in the worst case, we are keeping track of all of our nodes, um, intermediary nodes in this during this BFS recursion. So uh, the number of all the nodes in the worst case is n to the 2k. So space complexity will also be n to the 2k. All right, hope the approach is clear now. Now let's uh, code it up. So basically, this is a helper function. If s is s1 is s2, we just return zero. And for BFS, we're going to use a queue, which is going to be a deck that you can import from collections. And this is going to be a lot more optimal in performance than um, using a list as a proxy for a deck. So deck is where you can pop from the left. So first thing, first out. Uh, so this will be more optimal because we are going to use BFS um, here. So we want to use a deck where we're putting the current, well, okay, current string and um, depth or K. And we will have a visited set to keep track of the strings that we have already seen. And while this queue is not empty, we pop from the left uh, of the current string and then the current k that has got us to this current string. And if this s is already the same as s2, we just return k directly in the early exit. And now we want to do a for loop over its branches, which is all the no uh, neighbors that this current string can form that'll get it closer to s2. Uh, again, we prune it if it's already in visited. If not, we add it to the visited and we add this neighbor with one more uh, k plus one to my q. So this will be kind of the skeleton, the skeleton of this BFS code. And now we're going to get into this get neighbors helper function. So given a string, the current string s and the target string two, well, first we want to find a character that is um, going to be different from uh, S1 to S2 so that we want to swap it, right? So if uh, the two characters are already the same, we don't want to swap them because that's going to get you away, uh, further away from the S2. So we said uh, I is zero and then we do a while loop until SI is not the same as S2I. Um, that would be my first character that I want to swap. And then there will be a J for loop, uh, a for loop on the J index where basically we're just like looking for which J in S that I want to swap with. So it is to swap I and J within the same string, not across two different strings. So we do not ever touch S2 in this case. And this is arbitrary. You can choose to uh, swap S1 and then uh, never touch S2 or the other way around. So I believe that's going to be the same because it's uh, doing the same thing. Anyways, just different direction. Uh, so that does not matter. So this J loop, uh, this J for loop basically just uh, loops through the rest of your string and look for the first string that, um, the first index that is going to get you closer to S2 by not touching the ones that's already the same. And when we find that i and j, we swap it with string manipulations. All right, and this is going to give us about this time complexity with all of n to the 2k as both time and space complexity. All right, so this is it. I will be posting my link to my solution to LeetCode. I hope you find this 
um, video helpful in your lead code problem solving. And if you like it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.